dream is to be a fighter. The guys at G2 look to me to blaze the path. I want to be worthy of that. My family is looking to me to lead. I want to be worthy of that. What that means is there is no option but winning. And where I stand right now is the closest that I've ever been to fulfilling my dream. A few years ago, I was working a day job and wasn't really much of a fighter. I didn't have much tenure under my belt yet. And now I'm miles ahead as far as where I am in my fighting career. But I'm still in the same situation where I'm split down the middle. I'm still working a full-time job and only a part-time fighter. That's, uh, that's where the problem lies. I'm going into a premier organization where these guys are full-time fighters. These guys are using all of their time and dedicating it towards fighting. And, and that in and of itself is the dream. The dream is to be a fighter, not a U-Haul worker and a fighter. The goal is to be a fighter. This is the point where I transcend from being the everyday Joe to being who I want to be full time. Who I am when I fight and who I am normally, they're not exactly the same. There's certain character traits that are really highlighted about me when I fight that I want to have those be a part of my life all the time. Naturally, I'm kind of neurotic an overthinker. If we have a conversation, I'm going to think about the things I said from that conversation for hours, if not days, thinking about if what I said came off right or if I offended anyone or, or what this person thinks of me. And, and, and my mind's just running a thousand miles an hour. And when I fight, that's the only time that everything just I can't fight you and think about bills. I can't fight you and think about issues that I have at work. I can't fight you and think about these problems or anxieties or any issues with my self-esteem. I can't think about those things. I'm forced to focus on what I'm doing. And because I'm so close to my dream, I'm feeling an immense amount of pressure. I know that, that I'm so close that I can touch it. And, and a, that's exciting and scary at the same time because I got fears, I've got doubts sometimes that creep into my mind, and at the same time, I've also got people that believe in me. Everyone has doubts, everyone has fears, but they don't mention them. That they want to show you the best pictures in their camera roll, where they want to show you the best version of themselves and tell you that everything that they did came naturally and it was perfect and it was easy. By no means am I not confident. I am a confident individual, but one thing about me is that I always draw my confidence from my experience. There's a lot of things in life that you can do where you could just do enough to put it on your resume. Just barely pass the class so that way you can put it on your resume. You can just barely get this certification so you can put it on your resume and you might not have really put the work in. You might not really have put in the amount of effort that you should have. But when you're about to walk out and go fight, that's a really pure and honest moment. I'm going to question myself. I'm gonna think about all the possible horrible things that might happen or all the terrible outcomes. And I'm going to have to 
comfort myself by telling myself all the things that I did to prepare for this moment. And if I don't check those boxes, when I go and do that self audit before I walk out, I'm gonna come up short. It's my biggest fear is to come up short. These moments when I'm about to fight, I can't lie to myself. I really have to check those boxes because if I do just enough to put it on my resume, just enough isn't enough. What that means is I gotta grind. I think that everyone, uh, if you're a fighter, the dream is UFC, because that is, that is the Coca-Cola, that's the Nike, that is the premier brand. That's, that's the one that everybody knows about. And tough actually was something like kind of near and dear to my heart, because growing up, there wasn't, MMA wasn't super, super popular when I first started. It wasn't the biggest thing. Not everybody knew what it was. A lot of people didn't know what jujitsu was. And this show comes along, it's a reality show, and it really gave me like my heaping serving of, of MMA media. I really wanted to watch MMA, I wanted to watch things that reminded me of MMA, and, and when The Ultimate Fighter came out, I loved it. I watched it, I was sitting on the floor every day watching The Ultimate Fighter, sometimes binge watching it with my mom, and, and it was always my goal to, to be on The Ultimate Fighter, that was something near to my heart, something sentimental to me that just meant a little bit more than just a normal fight. And uh, they had my weight class this year. It just seemed like the right time. It just seemed like something that was meant to be and uh, really put my best fo forward on the uh, interviews and really trying to show that I could be a character from. I've been doing this for going on 18 years now and you know, I've always been called a champion, but now it's time to actually become a champion and, and win the Ultimate Fighter 32. Yes, sir. I'll see you guys. I appreciate it. Again, please, please, please make the right decision. As fate would have it, I ended up not being selected after talking to the producers for a few months. They ended up deciding to cut most of the American fighters and, and do something a little bit more uh, diverse and, and an internationally themed event. Uh, which kind of left me high and dry. That hurt. It was disappointing. I had been waiting on this opportunity and kind of let my family down too. And, and I don't know. It just seemed like it was something that was meant to be until it wasn't. And rebounding from that was tough. It was tough. Um, but I had to remind myself that the goal is to be a full-time fighter. It's to do what you love. And my ego says the UFC. You want to tell people you're a UFC fighter. But if I'm making a living, isn't that the dream? <laughs>